The Maison Lanvin that we know today would be nothing without an exceptional woman. Her name is Jean Lanvin, and her name still continues to circle around fashion enthusiasts to this day. Being the oldest Parisian fashion house to date, Maison Lanvin's activity has not been interrupted for the past century. The thing is, Maison Lanvin isn't highly recognized in the high fashion world in comparison to other giant brands. But in my opinion, there are many reasons why you should know about this brand. First of all, Maison Lanvin's attention to small details are like no other. It is essentially what distinguishes the brand from other houses. Intricate embroideries and pearls adorn Lanvin's pieces. Jean Lanvin also proposed a wide variety of styles to adapt to the needs of every single woman. Her inspiration and muse has and was always her daughter who through her juvenile youth would ignite a modern and contemporary image to the brand. Jean Lanvin's sensibility to art could be explained to her numerous voyages around the world where she would collect books and artisanal objects to help her inspire for her collections. Even within the stylist of her time, she was one of the rare designers who would let herself be inspired by the colors, motifs and symbols that would be present in cathedrals and art museums. Elle collecte des images, elle ramène euh, des textiles, elle ramène des gravures, elle fait des découpages. But what really launched the Lanvin's empire was millinery. In an April 1919 article of Vogue magazine, we can read, quote, When Madame Lanvin draws an illustration, she never forgets the head as it creates harmony with the clothes. Indeed, her original and stylistic choice of materials and inspirations for her hats made millinery a distinctive characteristic of the Lanvin house. The Lanvin house is also remarkable for their extreme attention to detail, whether it be intricate embroideries or exquisite appliques. Et vous voyez qu'elle est euh, typique de Jeanne Lanvin. D'abord, la broderie faite de paillettes superposées qui sont posées de taille décroissante et reliées par un fil. Et ça, c'est vraiment spécifique des ateliers Lanvin. On retrouve ça sur eux, de très nombreux modèles. Her masterful understanding of fabrics and pattern making grants her the ability to illustrate a garment in all its detail. It's very impressive to see her illustration and her creation side by side, as one could almost understand how the garment was made without being a connoisseur in modelism. Donc chaque personne a un savoir-faire une technique particulière pour la création d'un costume Exactement. Chaque personne a sa compétence propre. Vous avez par exemple le maître tailleur qui lui prend les mesures, crée les patronages, un monteur de manches qui va monter les manches, des apiesseurs qui pourraient être en mesure de faire les devants des vestes. Vous avez des, des personnes qui vont pouvoir monter l'école. Faire les boutonnières, nous avons une boutonnieriste qui ne fait que des boutonnières à la main. After the death of Jean Lanvin in 1958, many artistic directors would be in charge of the Lanvin image. This includes Antonio Canovas del Castillo, who would continue to produce stylish dresses, whereas Jude Donsois would introduce bright colors. From 2001, Albert Albers was in charge of artistic director and would carry the Maison's heritage in his arms. Being a graduate from Shankar College, this designer has worked for many renowned fashion houses including Saint Laurent and Guy La Roche. Sadly, the designer passed away on 2021 due to COVID, so today Bruno Cialelli is the new creative lead of the house. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Fashion Simplified and I hope we see each other another time. Bye!